Hello everyone, I'm the Solar Gamer, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program point nineteen point one. I am doing this a little late, so uh, I have the minor patch that was released to fix a couple things. But yeah, point nineteen is out, which means rover parts and a couple of new features like re-entry heat. Now, before we jump into the updates with the game, I have a great announcement. Kerbal Space Program is now on Steam. That is correct. This is its Steam page right here. Now, the Steam version will be available to everybody who uh, already downloaded the game or bought the game on the Kerbal Space Program website. Uh, the codes will be given out at some point in the future, but just know that you will not have to repay for the game, which is an amazing feature. And this is going to open up a lot more distribution properties here, so updating is going to be ten times faster and easier. And yeah, it's highly recommended that if you haven't bought the game already, definitely buy it on Steam right now. Definitely. I mean, that's, that's a no-brainer, right? <laughs> Alright, let's jump into the game. Alright, now the first thing you're going to notice is, uh, well, the launch pad looks a bit different. And, uh, you would be correct. Now this little buggy I made using the new little rover wheels, I'll go into that a little bit more in, uh, the VAB. But, uh, yeah, so let's explore- oh, take off the parking brakes. Let's explore the new launch pad. Because it's quite interesting. Whoop. There we go. Okay, now the first thing you'll notice is it's got a major retexture on the top of this. And there's grates and blast marks. It's even got. Oh, stop moving. It even has uh, a place for the fire to breathe out <laughs> from this area. And uh, you know what? You don't even miss the launch tower. It wasn't serving a purpose, anyways. <laughs> stop. Stop. Calm down there, buddy. Now, as you can see, the layout of it is a lot nicer looking, too. Everything has its own uniform type pattern. We got the water tower, the fuel tanks, and uh, another fuel or water tank or something. But they do have ladders now. Well, some of them do, just to add effect. So we'll switch on over to Bob Kerman. Hello, Bob. Okay. Well. He looks amused. They did add expressions, but apparently he is giving me a very stale face. Well, you'll see more expressions later on once we're flying something. Okay, yeah, so you can actually use these ladders. Climb up these towers. I mean, it's only used for, you know, entertainment purposes. Uh, there's no actual use to going up these towers yet. Whoa. Okay, a little glitch there. Bunny hop to the top. There we are. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, nice little perch here. You can watch the rocket go off. And then jump down. And then jump. And, okay, we can't jump. Oh, okay. Okay, moving on to the runway. Again, I just have a little buggy over here. This is just to show you what is new here. We do have new lights on the sides here, and I don't know if they've actually made them illuminated uh, at nighttime, but we have sloped ramps now, so we can easily traverse the edges without worrying about parts breaking off or what. So that's actually really, really helpful. I like that a lot. God, this buggy is highly all terrain. Pro rover right here. Let me tell you. <laughs> okay, now let's fast forward and see if it actually has lights that work. Oh, they do. Okay. Um, oh, crap. We lost power. Okay, well, at least we know they work. Perfect. So now when you're flying in, you'll be able to see some lights. Uh, they're not that bright, but it's something. I mean, this is obviously just a working model, and it's going to be improved later on. Why don't we hop into the VAB, and, uh, oh, that's loud, and I will discuss what else we have. Now, before I get into the new parts, I just wanted to say that KSP has gone Linux. That's right, the Kerbals have met the Penguin. So, yeah, people should be happy that that is available for however many people are using that system. Now, we have a new probe body, the Probo Dobodyne Octo 2. 
So there's the Octo 1. Here's the Octo 2. It's slightly slimmer. Okay, not slightly. It's pretty much... It's about three quarters the size of it. Now that's pretty much it for the cores. Uh, we move into propulsion. And I'm getting a strange error. What did I do? Uh, let's shove that back in there. You shouldn't see that. I don't even know why I came in here because there's nothing new in here. Let's move on to structure. First thing, we have a Probodobodyne Rove Mate. A little rover body for the probes. You can easily add the rover wheels, which we'll get to in a minute. And then we have a bunch of structural parts for building. They pretty much just put these in here to see what you guys will do with them. You guys have been doing amazing jobs with creating cool space stations since they've uh, they've added that ability. And now they're throwing more pieces at you to do with what you please. We have more beams of varying sizes. Sure, we'll stick that on the side. Beautiful. We have these cool looking panels. To me, they remind me of the Star Destroyers from Star Wars. The paneling that they use. And then we have a little micro node type thing which is what it's called and you can stick various pieces on these nodes so kind of like this but way way smaller oh actually one more piece we have the radial attachment point this looks like a a docker type node as you'll see right there that little base piece but it doesn't have the docker part to it jumping on over to utility we have a new battery it is the Z400 rechargeable battery. And this is the Z100. They're all Batman batteries, obviously. Now this larger battery has a charge of 400. This smaller one has a charge of 100. This is four Z100s next to each other. Obviously this is much more compactable. Compactable? I don't even think that's a word. It's much more compact. So you can definitely find the uses for that. Now to the rover wheels. First off, we have the little probe wheels. These are the smallest. Then we got the buggy type wheels. Oh my god, it's doing some crazy symmetry. Something's screwed up in my game right now. I don't exactly know what. This looks like a tractor. <laughs> yeah, something's wonky in my game right now, but I'm just gonna roll with it. That's, that's totally fine by me. And then we have the large, uh, I don't even know what you would call these. Gigantic beast wheels that are based off of the mobile platforms. The ones that actually bring the rockets onto the launch pad. Yeah, these are, they're huge. And yeah, it's phasing right through. I don't know what's going on here. And that's pretty much it for the parts, really. So let's, uh, let's see what this does. It's not going to get anywhere. No, it's going to fall over this way. Let's see what you do. Yay! Here we go. Oh my god. Yeah, and now it's stuck. I didn't expect it would do anything. <laughs> One of the cooler things that you can do with the, uh, the wheels is actually lock the steering, invert the steering, or even disable the motor. Say you wanted to use rear view steering, you could uh, lock the front wheels, or vice versa, lock the back wheels for front steering. And uh, you could easily, you know, change how your rover works. Alright, well this isn't the most unique thing I've ever built. In fact, it looks like crap. But I just wanted to show you guys how the these nice little buggy wheels work. So like I said, if you wanted to just have front wheel drive, now, only the front two tires are actually controlling where you go. Which is brilliant. It's perfect. Now, you could invert the steering as well. Now, if you hold down D, which is right, you go left and vice versa. Which is nice if you want to set the front wheels to uh, do it one way and the back wheels to do it another. So now you can power slide. <laughs> Let's get some speed going and then we'll power slide. And... Tss. Oh yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Alright, let's do this. Whoop! Oh! 
crap. So what I was trying to demonstrate there was the fact that these wheels actually break. Every rover wheel breaks, and you require a Kerbal to fix it. Here, let me... Alright, alright, alright. Alright, come down! Why did I decide to use an SRB? That, that was probably the, the first bad decision. Okay, here we go. Liquid fuel engine. Perfect. Now I can stop anytime I want. God dang it! What? Oh, this is not working. We don't need that much speed. Right after uh, we hit about 30? Is it 30? Maybe 60. Yeah, I think it's 60. Yep, 60. Okay, stop. Stop. Break. Break it. Tomius. Come on outside, buddy. All right. Now you just uh, right-click on it and repair. Boom. Back to normal. Now, obviously, if you don't have a Kerbal on Duna with your, uh, your little Curiosity-style rover, you're going to be screwed. <laughs> but, yeah, this is a great feature. That way, there, you're not entirely screwed if uh, you do come into problems like this. Just send the tool man out and uh, grab it. Oh. All right, ready? There we are. Good work, Tommyus. Now, I do have a rover on Duna. So, uh, let's quickly jump over to that. All right. It is morning on Duna. And our little probe is done with his solar paneling. With his energy... Getting? Energy collecting, that's the word. See, I know science. <laughs> right. This is that little buggy that you saw back on Kerbin. And I've brought it over to Duna to really show off this is what it's meant to look like. Now, as you will be able to tell, resources were not added. Like they were, uh, woo, woo, <laughs> like they were going to be. Oh. Um. Shh. He's hiding. <laughs> what? All right. So resources were going to be added, but they were pushed back just so you guys can have this update right now. Okay, now to show off one of the coolest effects in this game so far, and that would be re-entry heat. Now I have a space station up in orbit here. When I made this core, it looks so cool with the batteries in the middle. Uh, so I, I think I might be using that for another space station. But uh, yeah, I'm getting sidetracked here. We're gonna smash this thing into Kerbin's atmosphere. Okay, and we'll go to right there. That's good. Sure. After I destroy this space station, I have a little Kerbal that decided he wanted to get a nice quick tan. And the best way to do that is to fry him to a crisp. <laughs> I'm surprised the, uh, the solar panels haven't ripped off by now. This is actually quite confusing. What? They're supposed to break. There they go. <laughs> A little late, guys. <laughs> nice re entry heat. We also have mock effects hitting the sound barrier, going really fast. Uh, it's just a white shroud, which is really nice. And I tried to create a supersonic jet that would actually do that for you, but. I couldn't do it. I really couldn't. Okay, now we're gonna jump over to the uh, the Kerbal, and that crazy Kerbal would be Jebediah himself. He flew his private spacecraft up here, and he wants to get his tan on. <laughs> All right, let's make that happen for him. Now I might as well show you the Kerbal animations that are being worked on. 
right down in here, as you can see, Jebediah is a madman, smiling, and he's really, really happy, and he's changing expressions. Now, this is all uh, persistent. There are a lot of animations that they can cycle through. And uh, it's better if we have three Kerbals here to demonstrate, but I do not. Yeah, obviously Jebediah is going to be happy the whole way down. And this actually transfers into EVA mode as well. So in EVA mode, you'll actually see the expressions on their face. Now Bob... Oh, we're starting. Bob was giving me a little trouble earlier. He was giving me the stink face. Um, but Jebediah will display it very, very nicely. All right, Jeb, let's go. And there we go. Oh, yeah, there you go. You got a little smile on your face now, Jeb, huh? <laughs> wow, that is a pretty big flame. It's like a comet. My God, that is crazy. And he is still smiling. Look at him. What a trooper. <laughs> oh, God. All right, where are we? About 11,000, really. Okay, now we should hit the sound barrier, which is right here. We are now in the mock. Yeah, it's barely there. You can barely see it. If we had a steeper inclination, you'd be able to see it a lot more. Now, he's going to hit the ground, so he's going to activate his teleportation powers. Boop, boop. Oh, okay. And he's now back at the hangar. <laughs> okay, and to better show off the facial expressions, we are going on a little test flight with the Kerman brothers. Yes. All right, you're all ready. Checking your helmets. Checking the buttons. Looks like you're flipping some things. Fantastic. Let's go. Jeb is already starting to get happy. Bob is a worrisome... Wart. Uh, oh. Head shaking. Eyes flinging around everywhere. Really, really nervous. Bill's... Eh. I mean, he's he's worried. Because that just happened. <laughs> look at Jeb. Oh my god. Yeah, so if I look over here... Come on. You can see that Bob is... Smiling? Wait, what? Is he smile? Oh, they're all starting to smile. That is confusing. Okay, well, well, we'll save you guys for now. Oh, this thing is dropping like a rock. Whoop! What the? That? Hmm. Okay, we need to fire the engineers. Hire some new ones. But, uh, really, that's it. That's... 0.19. Well, I mean, that's not it. It's amazing. That's what it is. It looks like uh, they've actually added a little piece to the uh, the VAB. Now, I'm assuming they added this to match the interior, which actually has this little room hanging off the side of the VAB. Yeah, and we have the command pod tombstone type thing right here. Oh, it's actually got a collider. Perfect. This doesn't look wrong or anything. Okay, back off from that. That's the point nineteen update. I hope you all enjoyed, and definitely stay tuned for more Kerbal Space Program. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more.